This is episode 2 of Revelation, chapters 1, verses 1 to 3. So the outline of chapter 1 is it has 20 verses. We're just going to do the first three today as John meets the angel on Patmos and gets the, the vision. So verse, the three verses are the revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants, which must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testifies to everything he saw. That is the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it, because the time is near. So let's break this down, verse 1. The, the revelation from Jesus Christ. These first five words tell us this book is all about Jesus. He's telling us about the catastrophic end to this present age. This reveal comes directly from Jesus himself about the future and most importantly about his future. This reveal is not about prophets or kings or apostles. It's purely about Jesus from Jesus. So the next part which God gave him. Some people interpret this to mean that only after Christ was crucified and ascended back into heaven did God reveal Jesus' second coming. But that's not correct. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity, existed before time began. God, the Godhead, is outside of time. This revelation of Jesus, which God gave him, is a gift to John, and by extension to mankind, to expect Jesus' return. Jesus left this earth carrying all the sins of mankind, but when he returns, he will come in glory as the Lord of Lords. So the book of Revelation is a gift to us. The next set of words, to show his servants what must soon take place. God gifts this revelation to show his servants, that's us, what must soon, in the Greek it says what suddenly, what must suddenly take place at some future time. Jesus is telling, is telling us the signs of his coming so that we can recognize the time, so that we remember to keep Christ central, so that we're not deceived by any antichrist, so that we can all prepare for his coming and be ready for the bridegroom when he returns as the king of kings. In Romans it says, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. God has given a name exalted above all other names, and everyone will acknowledge him. John says, You search the scriptures, and these, the scriptures, are they which testify of me, meaning Jesus. The next part of the, the, the verse is he made it known by sending his angel to his servant John. We know who his servant John is. He's John the Apostle, to whom Jesus on the cross entrusted his mother for safekeeping. John the beloved disciple. The other beloved in the Bible was Daniel. And John and Daniel have this in common. They both wrote about apocalyptic times. For the first two centuries after Jesus' death, the common consent was that Revelation was written by the disciple that Jesus loved, that is John the Apostle, as he sat in lonely exile on Patmos, the island. It must have been comforting for John to know that Jesus was still thinking about him. And while the Revelation is from Jesus Christ, the messenger is an angel that appears to John on the island of Patmos. We don't know exactly who this angel is, but when John fell down to worship him, the angel said, Don't do that. I'm a fellow servant with you and with your fellow prophets and with all who keep the words of the scroll. Instead, worship God. So we know that Jesus told the messenger angel and the angel is telling John. So right up front in this first verse, we know that Jesus is coming again at some future time and we should prepare for his return. Since we are being forewarned, we can assume the future is going to be rocky. So let's break down verse 2. Verse 2, who bore witness, John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ to all things that he saw. We are told that this is the word of God, so we know that its accuracy is absolute. And forewarned is forearmed. God knows that it is for our well-being that we be prepared for Christ's return and that we conduct ourselves day to day in anticipation of his return. And so we come back full circle from the first four words in Revelation 1 verse 1, the revelation from Jesus Christ, to these words in Revelation 1 verse 2, the testimony of Jesus Christ, it's all about Jesus. And the next part of verse 2 that we're going to cover is all things that he saw. The operative word here is saw. 
John was in the spirit and he saw the future in a vision. And he's got, he is to tell the world of everything he saw. Revelation is a host of visual images. This is a drama that will unfold before John's eyes. John had proved himself as a detailed observer and accurate writer and could be trusted to present the words and vision of Jesus exactly as they were told and shown to him. So on to verse 3. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy and blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it because the time is near. Revelation is the only book in the Bible that says anyone who, who reads or hears this book will be blessed. And you're being blessed right now. And the word prophecy tells us this is a future testimony. The other part of verse 3, he reads aloud, who hears it, who takes it to heart. So we are blessed if we use three of our abilities. We are blessed if we read the words aloud or if we hear it and if we act upon the word of God on everything that is written in the book. So still on verse 3. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy. Blessed are those who hear it and take it to heart because the time is near. The people of the day thought that this message, Revelation, was meant for them in their day. But not all prophecies up to their time had been fulfilled. There are approximately 2,500 prophecies in the Bible and about 2,000 have already been fulfilled to the letter with 100% accuracy, zero errors. The remaining approximately 500 are still to be fulfilled and ongoing they are being fulfilled. Some of the end time prophecies that have already been fulfilled, for example, a Jewish homeland was established in Israel in 1948. And Jesus said, when this happens, this generation shall not pass away. In Matthew, he says, Jesus says, assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. And after the flood, God made our lifespan 120 years. Before the flood, um, Adam and Enoch and Noah all were living 900 years. Methuselah were living 900 years, 800, 900 years. But after the flood, God said, I'm not going to contend with man. We weren't the best uh, uh, sinless people. So God said we, he's going to make our lifespan 120 years. So if we take this day from when Israel was created, 1948, we add our lifespan to it, we get 2068 maximum. So then 2069, we can expect the apocalypse to start happening. So an interesting side note is that the prophet Robin D. Bullock has a testimony where God told him to write down each year starting from the year 2000. So he did. He wrote 2000, 2001, 2002. And when he reached 2069, God said, stop. You can find this fascinating testimony by Prophet Robin on YouTube, on channel Elijah Streams, and on Robin's own channel. So if Jesus said, this generation shall not pass, and the numbers add to 2068, it makes sense that God would stop Robin at year 2069. And that's just my take on it. You don't have to believe it, but think about it. So actually, there are some prophecies that seem to only apply to these end times. One unfulfilled prophecy is that the gospel will be preached to the whole world. When that prophecy was written down, the whole world was basically the Roman Empire. And Paul certainly made inroads into their territory, setting up churches wherever he went. So this purple is the Roman Empire. Here's the Mediterranean Sea. This is uh, Portugal, Spain, France, some of Europe, uh, Italy, Greece, Turkey, um, Syria, Lebanon, Israel, and then the African countries across here. So that, at that time, was the known world. And you can imagine, there's still the entire globe to go. So um, the prophecy has to be heard, preached to the whole world. But today, the whole world is the entire planet. And before satellite TV, this prophecy was impossible to imagine. But now, even the smallest village in the remotest place has at least its community TV and can watch the gospel being preached on TV. And almost everyone has a smartphone today so they can see Christ coming in the palm of their hand. Another end time prophecy is that God will send the two final two witnesses to preach the gospel. They will be murdered, their bodies will lie untouched for three days, and the whole world will witness this. Again, this is only possible today with satellite TV, global social media, and smartphones. 
Another end time prophecy is that the third temple must be built for the abomination that will take place there. And then, so we have Daniel 9, Daniel 11, and Daniel 12 all talking about this abomination. This, he will confirm, he being the Antichrist, will confirm a covenant with many for one seventh. That means he's going to confirm a covenant with Israel for seven years. And in the middle of the seven years, He'll put an empty sacrifice and offering in the third temple. And at the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. So, and then his armed forces will rise up to desecrate the temple. And from the time that the sacrifices are abolished, that's when it will happen. There will be three and a half years. And so basically the abomination, even Jesus speaks about it in Matthew so when you are standing in the holy place, Jesus says, the abomination that causes desolation spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand. Run, run, run. Then let those who are in Judea flee to, flee to the mountains. Let no one on the housetop go down to take anything out of the house. Let no one in the field go back to get their cloak. How dreadful will, that, those, uh, will it be in those days? So when he set himself up as God, in the holies of holies of the new third temple, this is a model of it, then pretty much run. So this is the end of episode two, where John meets the angel, and it's a prep for what the angel is going to tell him. Thank you for watching, and please join me on episode three. Thank you.